Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury, and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See my sons out burst into yin and yang, right? And that's me. The first thing I heard about you was that you were a real person. And if there's one thing that this world needs is more real people, okay. especially in our industry. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Tatnus Podcast, the last one of season three. Um, and the last one before Christmas. And please do excuse me as I get my Red Bull on. I am exhausted, dude. And it's not that I didn't get enough sleep. It's that the sleep is just so goddamn good at the, t- <laughs> at the time that, y- you know, you wake up and you're like, I'm not done yet, but I got shit to do. Um, you know, y'all know me. You know I don't sleep much. So, um, you know, when I finally do, it's like your body just is like, damn, son, give me some more of that. Uh, what you just heard was one of the sound clips from one of my favorite shows. Uh, it was such an honor to talk to Jess Thompson, and uh, you may have heard of the fucking super popular musician, singer, songwriter, Anna Thompson. That's her mom, dude. Uh, her mom's an actress and, you know, super cool fucking woman. I uh, love her to death. And we just hit it off immediately. And so what you just heard was kind of a little highlight of one of my favorite shows. So, um, man, I wanted to touch base, and I'm going to do this without Producer Blue today. Uh, we were going to do it last night, and I was like, fuck it. Um, you know, shit happens. And uh, we, we got to talking and whatever, so I was like, fuck it. Uh, I'll do it today myself. Uh, I just want to touch base with you guys before fucking Christmas and all that, before season four, and just say thank you, um, honestly, for making season four necessary, for for making it, you know, um, something to look forward to, and uh, I wanted to tell you guys what I have planned for season four. Uh, I know it's tradition now that on my birthday in January, I, I tend to do a show. And this year will be no different. And again, I'm going to do it the same way as I always do. So you guys can download it at your, you know, free fucking, you know, uh, at your will, if you so choose, um, whatever the fuck you want. But I think I'm going to do two shows that day, to be honest with you. Um, I think I'm going to fucking do this downloadable show on my birthday. And then I'm going to hit Twitch and do live shit because... That allows me to do what I would love to do and actually touch base with my fans and uh, actually talk to you guys in real time. That's so much cooler in my view. Um, So that'd be a cool gift for me is to be able to talk to my fan base and and thank you guys personally, not over a fucking recording, you know what I mean? Um, So that would be way more fun in my view, and that'd be a cool gift to myself. So... I think I'm going to do that, um, and as you guys may have heard, there will be a new, uh, website that I'm on, Kofi, where it's, you know, there's a paywall or whatever, it's going to be really cheap, but there's going to be exclusive content, and like I said, it, you know, for the monthly subscribers, that, uh, you know, it'll be $5 US per month, and that will give them, um, the first opportunities for movies that I'm doing, that I'm casting myself, like, you know, casting people, it'd give them the first crack at auditioning for parts before I make it public and open it up to the public. So we could work together. We could actually do a movie together. Um, so instead of, you know, at first they'll be like, okay, I'm paying five bucks a month, but then it's like you get paid, <laughs> you know what I mean, to do a movie. So it all works out. Um, so, I mean, I thought that'd be a cool perk. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I've been doing movies lately quite a bit. Uh, I got a, a lot in the barrel. Um, actually, Splatterhouse, I need to fully cast that. Yes, based on the video game. And um, so, you know, I, I need people for that. And I'll be giving them the first, you know, subscribers the first opportunity to audition before I make it a public audition post. So, there's that. Um, so if you're a fan of the video game, or if you're a fan of mine, or if you're a fucking fan of movies in general, um, you know, let's do it. Uh, Mick Strawn, I'm getting to be part of 
that movie for the uh he doesn't know it yet like but I'm hitting him up hard. He's a dear friend of mine, and he knows, like, I'm always... He's in my upcoming rom-com movie. It's a rom-com for guys, for those of you that aren't familiar. But um, Mick Strawn, if you're not familiar with who he is, if you like the movie Blade, if you like Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, if you like Boogie Nights, if you like the movie Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, so many others, then you know his work. If you like the TV show Freddy's Nightmares from back in the 80s that was based on Nightmare on Elm Street, you like Mick's work because he was the set designer for all that stuff. He helped write Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Um, if you remember the uh, the looping scene of driving in a circle in Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and they kept they realized they kept going in circles because Freddy's not letting them leave, um, that was Mick. And it was his idea on how to um, how to finally end that, where they crashed into something that wasn't there. He rigged that up. It was his idea on how to fucking end that that looping scene, and he rigged up the whole thing to make it look like the truck hit nothing. It was a really cool story. Um, also, buy his book, dude. If you guys love Nightmare on Elm Street like I do, three and four. Um, he has a book called, uh, Beyond, Beyond the Screams, or Behind the Screams, rather, sorry. Behind the Screams, I have it, um, and, uh, it, it's all about making the fucking movie, and there's pictures in it, and there's a whole thing, it's fucking super cool. It's all about how, you know, shit went when he was making the movie, um, and on set, so, uh, Behind the Screams is a super dope book. Uh, I got mine autographed, of course, with a little personalized message, because that's my homie. Um, that's the, that's my big brother, man. He's wonderful. I love Mick so much. Um, so he'll be in the rom-com and I'm getting him to do the effects cause he's a special effects guy. I'm getting him and I want Nick Benson. That's a dear friend of ours as well, who did Tremors, if you're familiar, uh, and the blob and the abyss and dancing with wolves and, uh, dances with wolves. Sorry, Jesus. I can't speak to them. I'm still half asleep. Y'all sorry. Dances with Wolves, um, The Blob, fucking The Abyss, um, all that shit. He did, like, all the effects for that. So I'm going to get them to do Splatterhouse with me, because they're the fucking tits, bro. And um, they were fucking wonderful, like, special effects guys. Um, if you've seen Friday the 13th Vengeance, they, you know, worked on that as well. Um, you know, uh, Nick Benson also worked on Nightmare on Elm Street 4. So, you know, these guys are fucking genius. I mean, they're just brilliant minds. And I thought, who better to um, fucking create monster guts and shit for a Splatterhouse, just like the video game. You know, you got to live up to the hype of the game. And uh, I do want to get the voice actor to do the mask's voice as well. Um, if you guys are familiar with who that is, he did some fucking crazy cartoon voices. So... Uh, that's gonna be fucking cool, and it's like the dude that did Winnie the Pooh's voice, but then he goes like total opposite and like deep fucking dark voice. Uh, super cool. Um, man, I am fucking out of it today, and words are hard, but um, bear with me. Uh, there's much to talk about. Um, I appreciate you guys so much, man. You guys have made it another dope fucking year worth of doing this, and uh. I fucking love you all for it. So thank you so much. Um, let me take a pause for the cause for a second and take a drink here. Where the fuck would I be without Red Bull? God damn, that's good. Um, just waking me up a little bit. Uh, fuck, I'm so out of it. <laughs> this is the problem when you never sleep, when you finally do. Fuck sakes, man. Um, but anyways, man, back to the point. You guys are the best. And doing this has been such a blast. And... Season 4 is going to be even better, as you may have heard. I have a lot of plans for Season 4. Um, again, I will say this. I am not moving platforms to a paywall. I'm just adding content to a paywall where people that choose to pay for exclusive content can do so. And basically, it's not a cash grab, I promise. It, it just allows me to justify, you know, certain things that I'm going to touch on. And the first show is actually going to be about this industry and how fucked up it is and the things that take place. And trust me, I've had some experiences, man. Um, I'm going to get into on the first show why I've cut some people from 
my upcoming rom-com and what happened that led to that because I know they're going to twist the narrative and I know they're going to fucking, you know, that's what people do. They play victim and they, they do everything wrong and then they fucking play victim and be like, oh, I was cut for no reason, especially when it becomes successful. Um, they're going to fucking be bitter. And uh, I'm actually meeting with somebody, hopefully today, that was the plan, about taking over a spot um, as Lacey. Uh, potentially maybe other characters, you know, um, because there's still more cuts coming, trust me, because there's a certain way to fucking speak to people, and it's unprofessional, uh, I won't tolerate fucking people thinking that they can talk to you like an asshole, <laughs> for no fucking reason, um, it's fucked up, so fuck that, but that's another story for another time, uh, this industry, when you, you know, the more you do for people, the more they treat you like you owe them something, and it's like, I don't even fucking know you, I don't owe you shit, um, it's a weird industry to navigate, and it's fucking strange, but we're going to get into that on the paywall show. Um, like I said, you know, donations, three bucks, five bucks for, for the month, um, but you're going to get so much stuff. You're going to get fucking personal contacts from me. If you so choose, if you reach out, you will be responded to. That way I know you're not some fucking, like, scammer, because I get that on social media all the time. So if you ever reach out to me on social media and I don't get back to you, I promise you I'm not being an asshole. I just don't know who the fuck is the scammer, you know, type anymore. Like, there's so many fake profiles that add me. It's fucking absurd. And I'm not trying to get my shit hacked. <laughs> so um, this allows me to kind of differentiate uh, who's who. And I can fucking, you know, if they're paying for it, they're not scammers, obviously. Um... But, again, you're not just paying to be able to speak to me. You're paying for exclusive content. You're paying to be the first notified when I'm going to do a casting uh, run for movies before I make it public so then everyone can apply. You guys will get the first crack at it. Uh, stuff like that. There's And free gifts. Like, every once in a while, I'm just going to, you know, pick somebody at random and fire off a fucking free Tatnus Co. fucking hoodie or something. Uh, to say thank you for your support and just for being the coolest fucking fans a guy could ask for. So, you know, I, I'm really going to step it up and, and, and make sure that uh, it's well worth it for everybody. Because I do appreciate your support. And a lot of that funding will go towards helping make movies as well. Um, so there's that. So then you'll get producer credits as well uh, on IMDb. So you guys will be fucking credited. You'll be on IMDb like, you know. What more could you want, right? Uh, it's kind of cool. Some people trip. or like, oh my god, I'm on IMDb. Like, that's the coolest shit. Because then it gets your foot in the door for, you know, a movie career. Um, some some people actually want to go on to become producers. And that's cool, too. Um, because without producers, we couldn't do this shit. So, um, you know, we're going to offer a lot of stuff. But uh, I want to talk about a few things today. And... Um, one of the biggest ones being fucking, you know, that was that um, fucking there's going to be an exposure of the industry and some of the shit. And uh, I assure you guys, man, when I have to cut somebody from a film, I do not fucking enjoy it. I do not get off on firing people. It sucks. I don't like fucking, you know, adversely affecting somebody's life. It's not fun. I don't get off on it. I do not enjoy it. But if I have to, I have to. And, and again, it comes down to when it's for the safety of the rest of the people on set because some people are fucking unstable or treat it like it's a fucking, you know, eh, never, I'm not getting into that. But um, let's just say, you know, people are dishonest as fuck. And uh, I, I'm all for fraternizing and shit. If you all want to hook up and whatever, that's your business. Um, but when you hear someone has done that, on set far too much and then find out that they're actually fucking married that's disgusting to me no, th no thanks i don't need that um not on my set um i you know i have a moral compass that it's not my business necessarily but i'm not going to let that be something that i facilitate and give the fucking location and uh, all the means for that to happen on my watch now i'm good on that um you know what I'm saying? It's just fucked up to me. But anyways, one of the biggest things I want to talk about is that recently I was asked to be on the Talk Black to Me podcast. And um, that I just want to touch on how fucking big of a deal that is to me. Um, for those of you 
that have seen the documentary about my life, you know where I come from. I come from a place where uh, I was certainly the minority. Uh, I come from the hood, man. Um, I come from a place where, you know, as a lot of you know, um, I, I was on the uh, fucking Chronicles of podcast where they were like, yo, we seen the, the, the fucking documentary. Is it true that, like, the you know, gangs in the, in the neighborhood fucking would fund a lot of things. Yeah, it's fucking true. And it blew their mind. Um, so I, I'm from Bloods territory. And once you pass the mall, um, that we, is the only mall we had (laughs) in that city, you were in Crips territory. And, um, so, you know, as most people know that that's a fucking, if you walk down them streets wearing red, uh, you're probably going to get fucking shot at, shot, killed, stabbed, whatever the fuck, right? Like, that's just the way it goes. Um, I was a different cat. I had a lot of respect in the hood, so, like, fucking, you know, I'm not blowing my own horn here by any stretch of the imagination, but I remember Madden's mom um, fucking tripping where, like, she would see a lot of blue, and we were looking at apartments back then, uh, in Crips territory, and she'd see a lot of blue and be like, yo, this is not going to be good. And then they'd be like, yo, what up, big man, and whatever. And I'm like, yo, it's cracking. And, you know, it's just mad respect because the thing about the streets is, like, when you give back and you don't discriminate because of where you're from and you just give back to everyone that needs it, like, you have respect, you know, because at the end of the day, what what the British cats didn't realize is, like, it sounded absurd to them, but gangs and shit... Um, are just funding their community that the government had given up on a long time ago. And um, so they had to take matters into their own hands. So in Blood's territory, um, they would put their funding towards local businesses. Like, there's this amazing fucking Jamaican food place. And the Blood's fucking... My ex and I, Madden's mom and I, went to uh, the corner store... And there was, like, this big crowd of bloods hanging out, and there was music and whatever. But, you know, that, you know, and the smell of weed, of course. And and to her, that was alarming, because it was like, oh, shit, and we're going there? I'm like, yeah, trust me, you know. Um, I'm from Bloods territory, so therefore you're affiliated by, you know, fucking rolling with them in the first place from my past. Um... You know, it is what it is. Young and you get involved in shit. I was never a gangbanger or nothing like that. But I was affiliated. Like, I was not to be touched. You know what I'm saying? Because fucking you get kind of cool with people. Um, but it was fucking hilarious when she was thrown off. Because at first her initial reaction was fear. Because she's not from the hood. She doesn't, you know, fucking she hears about these things all the time. But never saw it until she saw it. But then she saw beside that you know, swarm of bloods was a fucking bouncy castle. And she's like, wait, what? And then there's a barbecue. And, um, it tripped her out because her first encounter with bloods was like, we were in the, we were walking up to the corner store and they were like, yo, fucking y'all want to eat? Like it's free, you know? And what they were doing was they were doing this big fucking like barrel barbecue. Um, there was hot dogs for the kids, the bouncy castle for the kids. And then there was, like jerk chicken and some goat and stuff like that for the adults uh whatever your preference and free drinks like uh punch and stuff like that and it was to not only promote um the jamaican restaurant that was there that was family owned it was two young people uh a young couple that owned it and amazing food and dirt cheap like five bucks flat and you got so much food you could never finish it all and um, it was to kind of promote their business, but it was also to give back to the community. That's why they did this shit. Is you know, the Bloods fucking use their money that they made from doing whatever they do. You know, uh, yeah, they'd sell weed and shit like that. And um, but they would use that money to give back to the community because the government gave up on that community a long time ago. Because the government doesn't give a fuck if you're not a white community. They're not going to support you. You know what I mean? They're not going to fucking give you the best of anything. They're not going to give you a rec center, stuff like that. So the Bloods funded all that. Uh, One sec. I need my Red Bull. Sorry, y'all. Anyways. um, So, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, she realized, you know, and then they would come into the corner store and ask the uh, the couple that runs the corner store, uh, amazing Chinese family uh, couple that fucking literally ran that store for 40 plus years. And they would come in and be like, you guys want something? Like, well, we can't leave the store. Well, what do you want? We'll bring it to you. You know what I mean? And they were just, that's that's how it was. And, and you know, so when I was on the Chronicles of podcast, they were like, is it true that, you know, gangs fucking funded the community? It's like, yeah, bro. And this is how, like, this is what they did. It was dope. Um, you know what I'm saying? It, they're not terrible. Like, I know shit happens. And, yes, there, there's violence and um but for a lot of people that don't understand how gang uh territory works it's like they're trying to fund their community their block that uh the government had given up on and when you get two rival sides that both want to fund their community and take care of their local neighborhood um it gets you know when when people encroach on that territory trying to make money off of your hood that fucking you know you could be putting that money towards taking care of your fucking neighborhood and your families and whatever it, it's like two people with the same or two groups of people with the same cause but um you know it, it, it's it's a different mentality i mean if you were to open up a mcdonald's and then fucking someone open one beside you, you you can't handle it that way you know the way bloods and crips fucking handle shit but uh you know that's different but it's the same idea you know what i mean um and and i guess you know people from the uk that never had to experience that have no idea what the fuck you know the purpose is behind gangs they just hear about violence and drug deals and shit um but they don't really understand uh, what the point is behind it all and there is a point behind it all but i'm glad to see crips and bloods are kind of coming together now to open dialogue and kind of bridge the gap because people don't need to die for no reason man and making peace and then making dialogue uh thanks to game and snoop um shout out to both of them cats absolute legends that uh, are making some kind of connection an open dialogue between Crips, Bloods, and the cops. So, like, you know, there's less fear there. So people aren't getting shot and killed um, because they see a color of rag hanging out their pocket and fear cops will shoot first, ask questions later because they see gangbangers and they fucking, you know, uh, they become fearful of their own lives and they shoot first, you know what I mean? And um, so to... To kind of take away that mystery and open dialogue so now y'all know each other and when you see each other there's not fear anymore that's really cool but back to the point being asked to be on the talk black to me fucking show was such an honor because if you know me you know where i come from and um i'm aware of the fact that when I listened, the first show I listened to of theirs was basically fucking the absolute most prep I needed for the show because it answered all my questions that I may have had where I've always been a fan of the show, but like the first show I remember listening to more than once, I should say, um, was answering my questions as to would you have white people on the show if and and the answer fucking blew my mind it was so well said that it was like yeah if you're fucking coming to contribute to the show and what have you um you know but the thing is some people ain't coming to the table to eat they just want to just disrupt your meal and i'm like yo that's heavy that's profound because it's so true Some people ain't trying to come to the table to eat. Some people are just coming to try to disrupt your meal. And, yo, if you're here because you're an ally and you support the cause and you understand, then, yeah, you're cool by me. But if you're here to just try to fucking take over and change what we do here, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? You will not be well-received kind of deal. And um, I, I think after doing mad research, I honestly truly believe that I will be the first white person on that fucking show. And that's an honor to me because it's like that shows that they understand. And shout out to Jolly, my boy, uh, the host. And, you know, fucking 
um, you know, it, it showed me that he gets it. He knows where I come from. He knows, like, that I'm not somebody that fucking goes by color. I don't see color with people. I see people. I see people's actions. I see people for who they are. And, um, you know, I grew up in a fucking place where I was one of two white people in every high school class. So there's really no fucking difference to me. Um, besides culturally, which I have the utmost respect for that culture, and for him to invite me on the show and be like, you're cool as fuck, I've been wanting you on for time. Um, not because I'm a celebrity, but just because, you know, like, he could have gone that route and be like, well, you're a celebrity, of course I want you on my fucking show. But no, he values his show. And I'm aware, here's the thing, is I'm aware that he might be setting up, because he did the whole show one time, talking about how this is by black people, for black people, like the black community, this is for the culture, you know what I'm saying, and no one's going to change that, so I understand how there's going to possibly be a poten like a potential fucking fan base that by having my white ass on might be like, yo, you're selling out, or I mean, leave him open to criticism, but obviously he believes in having me on enough that he's willing to risk that and stand up for it and explain to people why the fuck um so you know there's a there's a certain level of pressure on me because i have to like i feel as the guest i have to fucking let those people know before they criticize why i'm there why um it was a, 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 even an option for Ja to have me on because it's like yo I get it <laughs> I came from the same place y'all fucking you know have experienced and um, you know what I'm saying and I came back to that place because it's home and I gave back when I made it and I fucking I still give back so I mean you know I'm not somebody that flexes my privilege and fucking you know better y'all than me no I come back to that place because that's home dude that's where I grew up that's memories um you know what I'm saying the hood is the hood is the hood like fucking no matter what fucking country it is no matter what state it is the struggles are the same and and if I can come back to my hood and give back financially and take care of families and shit without asking for any kind of recognition or fucking, you know, there's not going to be media posts about it. Um, it's just, yo, on the DL, here, let me help y'all. You know, let me do what I can for y'all. Um, that's why I get respect. I could go through Crips territory, uh, even though I'm from the blood side of the fucking hood, and nobody bats an eye, nobody fucking has a problem, because it's like, yo, you always have a pass, because you give back, you help the cause, and that's what it really comes down to, man. It's not ego. It's not fucking fighting over land you don't own. It's trying to help where the government failed you. And everyone has mouths to feed, man. And here's the thing, right? Um, one of the greatest things I ever heard, because it's very true, is when you don't make peaceful protest an option, then fucking violence is inevitable. And that's what it is. Is in the hood... Fucking nobody wants to hear those voices because the government is all fucking rich white folks. So they don't want to fucking hear what, you know, young black families that are struggling have to say because they're not going to help you anyway. So then violence becomes, you know, fucking inevitable because frustration happens and it's survival instinct, bro. Um, it's not that people want to kill people or whatever, whatever. It's, you know, I mean we're human we all have it in us and when you're backed into a corner sometimes just you get so fed up with feeling like you don't count that violence becomes you know um just a prerequisite for survival um so you know i hope people understand that a little better and don't fear everybody um and stop seeing color and fearing color because that's fucked up um you know what I'm saying? So to be asked to be on that show, knowing that he may be opening himself up to some kind of criticism from the culture and saying, why are you having a white boy on the fucking show? Because, you know, they can't seem to fucking stay out of nothing, man. They, they can't let us have nothing. They fucking want to be involved in everything. 
No, man, I was invited. I didn't ask to be on. I, I felt like I was such a fan of the show. I'd love to be on it. But I never reached out to ask if I, you know, if there's any interest in having me as a guest because I'm like, yo, that's overstepping. You know what I'm saying? If I'm asked to be on, it would be an honor. But I'm not going to ask to be on the shit because it's like, yo, white folks need to know to stay in their lane. And like, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you're invited because they know that you're an ally and you come from the same fucking types of places and uh, have the same experiences so you you know you're you're good you you love the culture then cool you know um then yeah we got something to talk about but otherwise you know you don't ask to be on something that's not really fucking geared towards your demographic you know what i'm saying if you fucking are somebody that they respect because you know you're in my position where fucking you obviously come from the same types of places and you know you understand the culture you've lived it um to a degree you've lived the gang culture you fucking you know you've been through all of that shit you've been through the poverty end of things i've been broke so many times you know i've lived in hoods where fucking the government just gave up on them you know and it's like yo i live here and do you think the government gives a fuck because you're white and makes an exception for you and says okay fuck every place in that hood except for that guy's house <laughs> no um uh, we're gonna make a community center just for that one white kid no they don't um you know what i'm saying like i've been there i've fucking lived it i've gone to high school where the ground floor had cages on the windows so that way street beefs couldn't carry on in the classroom like you know fucking the school had metal detectors in every entrance and a police station uh in the fucking school because the one across literally across the street at the mall that was two minutes away was not fast enough response time i come from a fucked up place and it's home i love it so um i guess you know getting to know me that way and realizing like we've experienced some of the same shit um I was invited to be on, and I'm so honored for that because um, I'm such a fan of the show. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I once posted on social media, it's one thing to be invited as a guest on a show. That's an honor. But when you're a fan of the show especially, it's a bigger honor where it's like, dude, I got to do due diligence here. Like, especially in this case, like I said, you know, there might be people from the culture that... Um, may feel a certain way like why are you bringing the white boy on your fucking show and whatever whatever um you know what i'm saying and like i understand that completely so i i feel like instead of just letting the host have to explain himself i feel like it's on me as a guest to fucking be as open and honest and, and be um as respectful as I can be that nobody even asks that question because they're like, oh, I get it. Like, dude knows what's up. And he's down with the cause. He supports us. He fucking um, understands what we go through because he's seen it, like, the majority of his life. And he knows how unfair it is and how fucked up it is that we've just been written off, you know? Um, so that's the thing, right, is you got to fucking respect the show when you're a guest, uh, I've been always respectful of every show I've been a guest on. I haven't always been treated with respect on shows as a guest, but, you know, that's different. That's, <laughs> that's another story for another time. There's just shows that the fucking host wants to come across like a badass and fucking just, you know, try to spark a beef with you because no one listens to their shit and they want to change that. <laughs> So they want to create controversy and try to look like a badass. Like, I'm going to fucking start beef with a celebrity because that'll get attention on my show. Controversy equals cash, right? Um, so, eh, uh, not really my cup of tea, man. Uh, it's too gimmicky. I don't like that shit. Um, but Talk Black to me is a dope fucking show that um, I've always been a fan of. And the fact that they've touched on so many things... And just that mentality, dude. I love that fucking attitude of like, yo, if you're trying to come to the table to eat, great. You know, I'll break bread with you. But if you're just trying to come to the table to disrupt my meal, fuck that noise. You're out of here. You know, I love that. So 
when Ja was asked if he would have white folks on his fucking show as a guest or say, you know, they had music to promote or, or anything like that, would you have them on? And he was like, hell yeah, if, you know, they're here for the right reasons. So to be invited, and I'm almost certain that I'm the first white fucking guest that will be on the show, um, that's an honor to me, you know. Um, for them to want me on the show without viewing me as a white person, just viewing me as a person that they think is cool as fuck, that has something to contribute, has something to say that, you know, people need to hear, to me that's an honor. Um, so what better way to cap off this fucking year than to kind of, you know, break a record, so to speak, and and be the first to do something. That's pretty cool to me. Um, so I'm honored. Thank you, Ja. Thank you, Talk Black to Me podcast for, you know, the honor of asking me to be on. Uh, it means the world to me. Um, thank you guys all, seriously, for fucking the years of support and uh, there's many more years to come and we're only going to get better we're going to do more video shows with better quality fucking equipment and we're upgrading the studio and the whole fucking thing i gotta fucking go wrap uh producer blues presents that i bought um i always take care of my people and um i've had fans ask me you know to send me stuff to the studio um for gifts and like please don't <laughs> and i mean that in the nicest way i love y'all for thinking of me like that but i just don't feel right like i'm fucking i'm in a good place dude like i don't need anything um it's very sweet that guests you know a past guest or or fucking fans or you know whoever wants to send me gifts and whatever i appreciate the gesture but like i don't feel right so if, if you want to support me, get something out of it. Like, fucking buy some shit from Tatnus Co. Clothing uh, at tatnusco.com or, you know, fucking buy the documentary um, or stuff like that. So you get something out of it, at least. You're supporting what I do, but you're also getting something in return and not just sending me gifts. I mean, I don't feel right about that. I'm, I'm good. I don't need anything. Um so you know what i'm saying like or subscribe to the fucking monthly channel um and and pay the monthly fee or whatever if you want to support me i appreciate all that but at least you're getting something out of it like just sending me gifts and shit like i don't need anything so i feel awful accepting it like it's sweet and i think it's really kind but it's like you know what i'm saying you wouldn't fucking send bill gates like a check for 10 grand just because like dude's got what he needs, you know what I'm saying, and I feel the same way, like, to just send me shit that I can just go buy, it's a really sweet gesture, but it's like, I can't justify accepting stuff, um, I mean, I, I do take it if people insist, it's like, okay, cool, I'm not gonna be a dick and be like, no, you can't have the studio address, but it's just like, I'd much rather you guys get something out of it if you want to support me than just sending me free shit, um, because you guys work hard for your money, um, and, you know, I just, I don't know, it feels, I'm, I've always been like that, though, even when I wasn't famous and shit, I was like, yo, I don't like people spending their hard-earned money on me, uh, it's fucking, I don't know, it's like, I just wish they would take care of themselves instead, buy something nice for themselves, that would make me happy, you don't need to give me nothing, but, you know, I prefer if people want to support me that bad and want to do something kind like that, fucking buy something from Tatnus Co. Clothing or something and, you know, um, rock the fucking clothing that I made for Madden back in the day. Uh, the business was for him, and then, unfortunately, he passed, so I kept it going. So, I mean, you're, you're supporting his memory when you buy shit, but I, I much prefer that um, than people sending me gifts and stuff. It's very sweet. Thank you guys so much for wanting to do that. But... Um, you know, I just, I can't justify it in my mind, I, I just, I've always been that way, I didn't, I didn't even like family buying me gifts for, you know, Christmas or birthdays or whatever, it's like, dude, you don't need to do that, <laughs> like, um, that's just me, that's just me, um, sorry guys, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, it's just, I, I literally just feel guilty, I guess, when, when people spend their money on me, uh, it, it just, I don't know, 
I just wish they would rather, you know, do that for themselves or something. Buy, I would rather they buy themselves something nice, and uh, that would make me happy. Um, or, or if they're going to support me, you know, in that way, at least get something out of it in return. Buy something, you know, that you can... You're supporting my business, but at the same time, you're getting something out of it, too. But thank you guys so much for the sweet gestures of wanting to send me gifts and shit. That's really kind. Um, I just would prefer you guys get something out of it, you know? So, anyways, I'm going to wrap this bitch up. I have a lot of Red Bull to drink, and i got to wake the fuck up. So, I love you guys, man. Um, this will be the last show, I think. Maybe I'll do one with Blue before... Uh, maybe tonight, I don't know. I, I really couldn't tell you what the schedule looks like. I haven't even looked at my agenda yet. I got so much shit to do. But in case this is the last one before Christmas, I hope you guys have the fucking most stellar Christmas. Um, or whatever holiday you celebrate. Uh, fucking hell, if you celebrate Festivus, bro, I hope your airing of grievances is the fucking dopest. I hope that you fucking let everyone know what problems you have with them. <laughs> Um, and, uh, I hope your new year is the tits, bro. Fucking have the best, but safest new year's. Drink your ass off, just don't drive, I right? Um, don't do that shit, you know. Um, just be safe, guys. But have the best fucking time ever. I love you all. I will see you in season four. And thank you so fucking much for the years of support and all the kindness and the outpouring of fucking emails and... And everything you guys do, man. You guys make this worth doing. You guys are the fucking absolute best. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And have the best Christmas or holiday of your fucking choosing that you possibly can. And be safe and appreciate each other. I love y'all, man. Thank you. I'll catch your asses later.